We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up, up. Bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing and the freaks are coming out now. Welcome, everyone, to AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. I am Aubrey Edwards with my best friend, Will Washington. I'm a referee. He works in creative. But once a week, we get together and we talk about all of the things happening at AEW with awesome people that work at AEW or have been around AEW. And speaking of awesome things happening at AEW, we're like nearing the end of our road to all in residency in Arlington, Texas, which has been, in my opinion, absolutely incredible. I have had a blast. I wasn't sure what to expect the first time I walked into the venue. Same. But, you know, I, I've been at every show there, and uh, I will be at every show. It's such a different environment doing the residency, but it, it's it's very cool. Uh, one thing I want to give a shout out to is the uh, Arlington, Texas catering, which has been... <laughs> <laughs> People love the catering. That's the one thing I keep hearing is like, man, this catering is real good. There were churros the first day. And like from then on, I've been, I've been sold. Right. But anyway, I just, it's such a just chill environment. Everybody's having a good time. Yeah. I, I couldn't be happier with how these shows are turning out. We've had some really cool uh, signature moments. You have to be the first female referee uh, on a Ring of Honor pay-per-view. And Correct. that, again, in itself is just such a cool moment, especially for that pay-per-view. That was such a great show. Right. And, from top to bottom. And the fact that people keep walking away from these shows. I talk to fans after the shows, and they are just over the moon. They've got that energy high, and they just want to come back to the next ones. We've had multiple sold-out shows. I have zero complaints about this experience. It's been so good. It's been so great. And just seeing all of the fun, like emotional moments that have happened, like having the Von Ericks and Dustin Rhodes win yeah. ROH six man championships. We literally have someone from the Rhodes family and people from the Von Ericks family holding gold in wrestling together. And that's just really, really special, especially in Texas. Yes. I haven't been a wrestling fan my whole life, but even I understand how special that is. And like Dustin and I are really close. Like he, he really helped us kind of come together as a women's locker room during the pandemic. So being a part of that match was super important to me. And it was just being able to like literally hand him his first title since he started working at AEW. And it fits so naturally. Like just it seeing really him. Does. Like, yeah. Seeing him with the belt. It's like, I can't believe he hasn't had a belt in so long. Right. Um, in his entire AEW tenure, but it's, at the moment he was holding it, I thought, yes, this is where it belongs. It's also just been really good to have this Texas crowd. Like, I think the last time we did residency was AEW Dark in Orlando. And yes, Orlando wrestling fans are great, but Texas fans will give most fans a run for their money because they are yeah. so into this. Like, they want to be there. They're engaged the whole time. They're very energetic. We did the one day of tapings where we did two sessions. It was like six hours of wrestling, and they were still loud as hell by the end of the day. It was insane. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the moment that I am still just over the moon about was a segment I produced on Collision in which it was a backstage with a conglomeration. I, I do most of the conglomeration segments, but in this one, <gasps> Mark had the idea to bring in <laughs> Baby J. That was something that, when planning out the segment, I hadn't accounted for. But once he said it, I was just like, I, I, you could feel the energy of those fans when you're backstage. You can you could feel kind of exactly what they're going to respond to. And I just knew the second that baby was on screen, they were going to erupt. And to when it happened and they did, it was just such a moment. I have been thinking about that ever since. I probably watched it a hundred times ever since. Same. I'm so glad we uploaded it to the AEW YouTube because it's a special moment that baby Jay Briscoe gets to be uh got his to make his AEW television debut, and it got to happen there. What a special moment in a in the city that Jay Briscoe had uh, his last match. That to me is is very very special, and I think is really really cool. And uh, I can't wait. You know, this has been a great road to All In series. We are now heading on the home stretch to All In. Right? We're heading toward London. And speaking of London, <gasps> we have a special guest today here on AEW Unrestricted. Who have we got here, Aubrey? 
Today's guest, I'm very, very excited. He's rather like taking our show by storm every time he shows up. We've got Tommy Billington here, everybody. Welcome to AEW Unrestricted, Tommy. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. We were uh, we were just catching up before we actually started pressing record, and you're hanging out in Regina in Canada uh, rather than Calgary. When did you make the move? Just recently. So I was staying in Calgary. Well, I was actually making trips back and forth to Calgary and England since 2022. Holy shit. And so I'd be flying back and forth every week because I lived in the UK. In about December of 2023, I decided there's no point in doing this flying no more. So I'll just stay in Calgary full time and just make more of a living out here. And then actually I was looking for somewhere else to maybe move somewhere else. And then when AEW actually contacted, I thought, well, this is a perfect time. So I thought, well, I've always liked the countryside and peaceful lakes and hills. So I was like, I'll make the move now. Well, it's, uh, I'm able to, you know. Well, let, let's talk about the Dynamite Kid, Tommy Billington, because yes. I was sitting in the creative meeting uh, when it first came up that you would be working that first episode of Collision you did back in May. Everybody's eyebrows raised because they hear, wait, Dynamite Kid, Tom Billington, that can't be right. <laughs> and then they're, they're like, no, 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 Tommy Billington. But then we get your picture and your graphic for everything. And of course... That didn't stop everybody from going, wait, that can't be right. I thought it was a ghost, legit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the resemblance is uncanny. I'm sure you've actually heard that quite a bit. Uh, but, you know, for this to be your introduction to a lot of AEW fans, how was that experience uh, as that came to be? Actually, I was never going to use the Monica Dynamite kit. <gasps> it was actually up until two weeks before AEW that I had to start using it. Because I never, I was, I was really funny about using that because I didn't want people to get the wrong impression. I'm just leeching off that sort of name just to boost where I need to be. So I always thought, I just want to make a name for myself. So for the longest time, I just went by Tom Billington. And then right before, two weeks before AEW debut, I was in Brett's house just having dinner with him or, you know, whatever. He tell me, he's like, Tom, I really think uh, you should use that Dan Mike Kid name as long as your name too because you look so much like him. You talk like him, you even walk like him. It's like, he reminds me, so, he, I remind him so much of him. He said it, it scares him a little bit. So <laughs> <laughs> at first I was kind of like, I get where you're coming from Brett, but I really don't want to. And then it, it took like weeks to be like, Tom, I urge you to use it because it, it will do you good. And people won't ever doubt you when you use it too, because they'll see how you work they'll just like him. And they'll be like, there's no doubt the dynamite kid. So after a few weeks, I was like, you know what? I'll give it a test run. Two shows of using it. It got really over and people was like, yeah, no doubt. Like you look so much like him. And I get it every day. Like they'd be like, you look so much like your uncle. It freaks me out. It takes me back to like the 1980s, the Stampede Wrestling and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I know. <laughs> so when AEW was like, no doubt. We have AEW Dynamite Collision. It's like, of course I'll use it. Ever since it's been the best decision I ever made, to be honest with you. It's uh, it's one of those things when Bret Hart tells you something like, "Hey, maybe you should do this." Like, maybe you should listen to him. <laughs> maybe <laughs> like, I should yeah. listen. <laughs> <laughs> Just a suggestion. He might know what he's talking about. Yeah, it's only been. There. I also like the the casual suggestion of like, I was just having dinner with uh, Bret Hart, and I'm just sitting here <laughs> thinking like, if Dax Hardwood is listening to this, he's so jealous right now. <laughs> yeah, we've surprised Dax with a few times guests. You know, like when we came over for when we was in Calgary. Mm -hmm. We saw, you know what, Dax, come to Brett's house and have a uh, have some wine and stuff. And he, he was over the moon. Like I've never, seen, he's like he was like a kid at a candy store. You know what I mean? Like it was the best, one of the best days I've ever had. <laughs> oh my god! So you find out you're debuting at AEW. When did you find out it was Dax that you were wrestling? Well, I actually found out about the debut and Dax on the same day, which was Ooh. like two days prior. <laughs> That was the meeting I was in. So, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> it was a Saturday that the show heard, well, live. And then I got the call probably about Thursday. Someone actually messaged me, one of my friends, like, said, who know Dax, too. I was like, be ready for a phone call today because uh, Dax from FTR is going to give you a call. I was like, stop pulling my leg. Like, it's not <laughs> no time for ribs. You know, you rib me enough. I rib you enough. Just not today. And he was like, no, I'm serious. I was like, all right. I didn't believe him. And then all of a sudden I get this like text message on WhatsApp, like, is this Tom? 
was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, can you just uh, have a quick phone call with me? I was like, all right, who's this? I was like, what's Dax? I was like, no way. And then uh, <laughs> he gave me a call. I was like, so uh, we're looking for an opponent for me on uh, Saturday night. Well, I was thinking you would be a great fit. We've been in Canada and Dynamite and Brett and all that. So I was like, would you want to do it? I was like, do I want to do it? Yeah, I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and before I know it, like the graphics going up, I'm debuting and I guess the rest is soft history, you know? I just couldn't believe it at the time. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I remember how quickly it happened because it, it was literally we had the meeting on a Tuesday or on a Wednesday. And then next thing we know, uh, just everything is rolling very quickly and you're on the graphic. And again, the internet is just like a little bit mind blown at the idea that uh, we're yeah. seeing Dynamite Kid on the show, and it definitely looks like Dynamite Kid. I feel like when it came to that actual match happening, um, you definitely lived up to the moniker. I think fans walked away going, oh, this is the second coming of the Dynamite Kid. I want to see more. And I think anybody who had any questions about it had those answered. You know, talk to us a little bit about what it was like being in the ring with Dax and being in that ring in Calgary and and feeling the energy of those fans. Obviously, I, I couldn't have chosen a better first opponent to debut with, with the history with Dax being pretty much Brett's number one fan. <laughs> Brett being sort of like my number one mentor all my life. You know, I've known him since I've been around, really. No, it all, it's all connected so well, and I couldn't ask for a better just time, opponent, the venue, you know, Canada. I will make, yeah, the nerves were kicking in because obviously Dynamite Kid, Tom Billington, and stuff like that was like, it's a lot of it's big boots to fill. I'm glad it was so short notice because I, I wouldn't have liked a month to sit on it. So I'm glad I, I got in there like, as soon as possible to show them what I've known all along, you know. And just the, the audience's energy, like I've never felt energy like it. You know, AEW is just on another level right now. It was such a blessing to finally get an opportunity to wrestle such a good wrestler, one of the best in the world, if not the best right now, especially best tag team. And uh, to actually learn and get that experience is truly one of a kind moment that I'll cherish forever, you know. It's kind of interesting because I didn't think about it until you said it that having such short notice is actually kind of beneficial because then you're not like mm -hmm. overthinking it, right? Like if you had known this yeah. was coming, they're just like, okay, maybe I do this, maybe I do this. I don't know. Is that too much? I don't, uh, uh, uh. but like just being able to go in and be you, yeah. even though you are using your uncle's moniker, it proved successful because it was just such an excellent match i mean dax like leaves you in the ring after you have this great reception from the fans eventually you come back and wrestle again and we'll talk more about that but my favorite thing is i think you posted a picture of you and brett studying the match afterwards yes we did <laughs> <laughs> which away. is so great <laughs> yeah. yeah what what was that like what was that like having having brett kind of review your match for you having him being such a such a big mentor so yeah, as soon as the the day was over, we text Brett. I was like, "So tomorrow, can we like come to us and like watch this straight away?" Because I, I need, to, uh, I'd like to have some pointers and everything. Because there's always room for learning, no matter what level you're at. So I was like, "I want to go around. I just want, I just want his opinion, just for curiosity. Whether he says it's the worst thing ever, <laughs> and that Dynamite Kid was a the terrible idea, we should never do it again, or how great it was." And uh, we went round, and he, he watched it. He just thought it was so fantastic. Mm. He was like, he couldn't have been more prouder, especially of me and of Dax. He was actually really proud of Dax too for giving such a good effort for the both of us doing such a good job. And like I said, I trust Brett's word uh, above anybody's. So having him look it over and give me pointers here and there, it was just, I can't ask for anything better to be honest. Ah, what a mind to get to learn from. And honestly, I, I want to hear more about what that experience was like. And I think everybody else will want to hear about that right here when AEW Unrestricted continues. We've got more after this. AEW Unrestricted, it's Aubrey and Will. We are with Dynamite Kid, Tommy Billington. Tommy, I actually wanted to ask you a little bit um, about what your wrestling fandom was like coming up and, and what you took in as far as, you know, obviously, you know, you have the family connection, but as far as your affection for professional wrestling, what was that like for you coming up? Yeah, it's pretty funny because I feel like it's always been there no matter what. 
it's like even before I realized what professional wrestling was, it was always ingrained in my mind anyway. At like three years old, four years old, we'd have like this big giant red crash mat with two makeshift turnbuckles, like that was really tall. And me and my brother, like he was about two years old, I was about four because two years difference. We just honestly just wrestle all the time, practice all these frog splashes off the top and everything like that to snap suplexes. So even before I even watched anything on TV, was doing like some crazy stuff, to be honest, for two and four year olds to be jumping off like fences and <laughs> stuff. Like, even now I'm thinking about like, why did I do that? Or why did my parents even allow me to do that? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like, it's always been in my life. My dad would always be him, Dino, his brother always watched all the 80s stuff because he was growing up in that era. So he watched like Saturday Night's main event, all the WWF house shows or whatever it be, pay views, Summer Slam, Survive Series. He'd watch Stampede Wrestling. So whilst he's watching all that, I'm sat in the corner, probably taking it all in. At the time, I was actually studying moves. It's so, like what to use on the outside in the crash mats. So I was like, I'm going to do that to my brother later. Some like spine buster or something, whatever it was. I was like, so I'd always just sort of take it in no matter what. Like I always had an open mind to learning it. But growing up, I had no doubt in my mind I was always a wrestler. There was no job ever that was going to take that away from me. Like I was never going to be anything like a normal job or whatever. I was never, never crossed my mind once. Makes total sense. I mean, when you grow up around it and you're watching it from the age of two, giving you know yeah. your brother spine busters and stuff in a living room <laughs> and no one's stopping you it's like well clearly this is the direction that you've set for yourself <laughs> yeah so when did you start training and how, how did that whole process work so at first i got i got to about nine ten years old i was telling my dad and things like that like can you can i be a professional wrestler like, can i go training in a ring and with an actual coach and stuff and we actually tried to reach out to marty jones at the time an old school world sport wrestler. And he said, you're too young right now. So come back when you're 16. And that's more appropriate. Good. It's a very responsible adult thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm thankful for, really. Which we don't hear that often. So no, that's Correct. actually great. <laughs> Good on him. <laughs> so in the meantime, I said the closest thing to do was become an amateur wrestler. So from 10 to about 15, I did actual grappling wrestling and catch as catch can and they got some medals going in there and learning that. Oh, just got some medals. Just got some medals. No yeah, big deal. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> so it was uh, all the way through school. I'd be like, people would ask me, like, what am I doing when I leave? So this is about 15, 16. I was like, well, I'm actually going to go and become a professional wrestler. And at the time, I can see where they was coming from when they was laughing at me and be like, come on, Tom, what are the actual chances of you becoming a wrestler? It was like, have a plan B at least and uh, just get a get a proper job and just be normal or whatever. And then I was like, no, I'm not doing that. It's like, I don't want to listen to you. You're my friends and everything, but I'm not listening to that. Like, I know I know what path I'm meant to be on. So the last week of school, I was done with school. Like I hated it. I'd even set me exams, like the final exams. I just left and started wrestling school. But the two weeks before wrestling school, I was going to my dad every day. So uh, it's going to the end of my school year. I'm leaving school for good now. Uh, can I go do that wrestling? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll take you next week. And then next week comes, we didn't go. So the week comes after, I'm like, can we go? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll take you next week. We don't go that week either. I come back the third week, I'm like, dad, can we go to wrestling school? I'm serious about this. And he's like, are you really wanting to be a wrestler? I was like, yeah, I want to more than anything. And he was like, all right, I'll take you then. It's this Saturday, I'll take you. So what he had in his mind that he didn't want me to end up the same way as like Dynamite did and stuff because he, he knew like how the business is and it's pretty hard on people. So he, he didn't want that for me at the time. He's like, right, I'll take you then. And he ended up taking me a Saturday. And that's when we did meet Marty Jones and he did teach me. And uh, the first time I went, he was just teaching me the basics, the rolls, the bumps and stuff like that, what you do in wrestling school. Apparently I was doing it so good that Marty Jones turned around to my dad and was like, there's no way it's his first time in a wrestling ring. But I was like, I'm telling you, it is. Wow. He's, he's only just left school. So after my dad saw that, he was like, he, he's got it. Like he knows what he's doing. Like he's got like the gene that will, that's not so easy to come by. Cause my dad did try professional wrestling for a bit and uh, yeah, it just wasn't for him. Cause he was 
to train with Dynamite, and Dynamite was pretty tough in those days, like towards the end of his career. Like he just dropped like back suplex my dad on his head and things like that. Just oh, no. whatever. But that's that. That was my dad's training. So my dad was kind of like, yeah, not not for me. So he kind of thought that's what they do to me. Like I go in with the wrong attitude, being like, oh, this is gonna be easy, and then get dropped on my head, and then be like, cry about it or whatever. But when you see now what I was doing, he was like, I'll let you do this now. From there on, I've just history really. Just train every week. And How long was it after that that you eventually got to have your first match? So I started in June 10th, 2017, and my first match was December 23rd, 2017. So about six, seven months. So not too long at all, to be honest. Yeah, no, that's pretty quick. You literally started training like a month before I did. That's crazy. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. July 2017. <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> What a great summer for both of us. Jeez. <laughs> Absolutely. So you, you'd said your, your brother's like two years older than you, right? Or two years younger? Two years younger. Two years younger. So when did he start training with you? So he came the first day with me, but he was just spectating it because he was actually going to get signed by a soccer team at the time, uh, Manchester City or something like that, like a full-time <laughs> contract. Damn. <laughs> I know. So he had his mindset <laughs> on that. So he came watching me. He was like, wow, this is this looks really difficult, but it looks really good. And then I went the week after on my own. We did another session and my, my brother saw like the Facebook Live training session. He was like, I really want to give this a go. And then he was like, well, you come down next week and, you know, I'd like to have a, a training body of sorts, you know. So he came with me and, you know, he was just as much of a natural to it. Like he could do everything. So he could even, he could do the flips and everything day one. Oh my God. I was like, well, no brainer, do that. And he was like, yeah, I'll do it. Like, it's it's so much fun. It's He can, like, show off his athletic ability and things like that. And he loved it as much as me. So it was about two weeks after that, after my first initial session. Well, so the two of you, of course, got to wrestle as a tag team. Mm -hmm. What was it like kind of building the dynamic between you two? And, and what was that like? And uh, how, how do you feel that dynamic grew over time over those last few years? Oh, yeah. Well, me and Mark have always been close, you know. When the wrestling came, I was like, well, I'd, I'd like a tag team partner. And then we thought, well, if you start, then maybe we can be a tag team. And cause I, I initially just planned to be a solo all the time. And then when he came into the picture, I was like, it made me rethink. I was like, you know what? He's so good at it. And he's just so young, too, and so into it like me that, well, we should do a tag team because if we can combine our stuff together, we I think we do pretty well. Yeah, before, you know, it was like, from there on, like, first show, we tag teamed and was like, well, yeah, we'll do this from now on. Like, we're forever a tag team. Like, And it made us, like, really close, too. We was close before, but traveling the road together and doing shows together as well, it made us, like, unbreakable. Yeah, for the longest time, we just tag teaming. Like, even just up until recently, before this AEW debut came up, we was nonstop tag teaming and things like that, and we just, yeah, just unbreakable. That's one of the best parts about being on the indies, I think, is just the traveling with other people and the relationships you build when you're so much closer yeah. with everyone and you're trapped in this car for a long amount of time and you're just talking about like, okay, well, what are we going to do in our match tonight? What are we going to do this? Or talking about everything that you've seen on TV. It's just, mm -hmm. it's one of the great things about wrestling that I don't think other forms of performance really get to experience and it's just really great that it's like it's also something that you got to share with your brother that's so awesome mm -hmm. there is so much more to talk about with tommy here on aew unrestricted coming up stay tuned aew unrestricted aubrey and will talking to the new dynamite kid the current dynamite kid tommy billington you've seen him on dynamite you've seen him on collision he's he's just this rising star in canada and we're so happy that he's had a chance to speak with us today a little bit get to learn a little bit more about him uh in the first segment we actually talked about your match with dax a little bit and i want to talk about your match with Takeshja a couple months later on collision how was that match in comparison to your match with Dax, because they're both two incredible competitors, but obviously very different wrestlers. Yeah, I've, I've actually uh, always wanted to wrestle Takeshita because I'm really big in uh, Japanese style and obviously being rooted with Dynamite. Mm. I think he was the best second opponent I could have asked for too. Hard hitting, very tough. You know, I've got to show a lot of heart in there. And I feel like I did that. I always have to keep my shoulder turned and keep an eye on Don, you know, because <laughs> he's always up to something. That damn Don. 
the match itself, um, they, it featured uh, a pile driver contest, which was just <laughs> insane. Absolutely nuts. It had the crowd on the edge of their seat. Everybody was into this. You know, knowing that you're getting in with Dax was one thing. You know, uh, I think that, you know, Dax being a, a big fan of Bret the Hitman Hart and, and your family's legacy and things of that nature. But then you have somebody like Takeshita, who is just so big in stature and mm -hmm. almost so many different styles in one guy when you look at what Takeshita brings to the table. And so, again, when did you find out that that match was happening? I must have found out. About four days beforehand, something like that. Much, much more time to that. Much more time, that, twice, that, as much twice as much. Time. <laughs> twice as much. <laughs> I was actually really excited about it because it's like now I've got my foot in the in AEW that it's no more nerves, no nothing. I was I was ready. Yeah, Takeshi, I respect him so much, especially over the last like couple of years. He's gone from you've never heard the guy to superstar in my eyes. Yeah, it's like, and I've always wanted to wrestle this Japanese style and nothing but pure heart and soul in matches. Meeting him was extraordinary. So such a such a good guy. Just that he get he gets a little just twisted sometimes by bad uh, influences. Let's say. <laughs> so yeah, I agree. I agree. He was a really good guy until that Don dude came along. Yeah, that, less we talk about him, the better. But yeah, right. <laughs> regarding to Kashta, one of the best in the world. Can't even ask for a better opponent. So much to learn from him. I'm just glad that I was able to go in there and give everything I could and show him that I'm not just a name, that I am pure heart and soul too. So that first show, uh, the the match against Dax was in Vancouver, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, that Vancouver crowd, incredible crowd. Insane. Um, yeah, I, I think, honestly, one of our, our more underrated crowds of the year. But I think one of the joys of Calgary is of course you know getting to be there during stampede you got mm -hmm. to have the advantage of all of these people chanting your name that is something that i think all of us backstage were just taken aback by like this is this is magic in a bottle here this is mm -hmm. happening uh, right before our eyes did you think the fans were going to respond that way um for either match uh, to be honest no the first time i was expecting absolutely nothing because i'd never been on tv before so I knew going into the first match, it'd be sort of uphill, an uphill battle because obviously no one knows me. So I walked through the state, uh, the entrance stage when my entrance was playing. And of course, you could hear a pin drop in there. <laughs> but by the end of it, I, I feel I won the respect of everybody in there. Coming into this second match, I had a feeling that I get a little bit, a bit of respect with being in Calgary, being, you know, a local guy and you know, everyone knows me in Calgary because I've been around so long. I was only expecting just maybe two people chanting my name and then, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and it turns out yeah a lot of people actually give me the support that i needed and looked out for me and i, I yeah i didn't expect it at all and i'm really grateful for it so to all the fans out there that keep supporting yeah i didn't expect it at all one of my favorite moments of that match with Takesha was what happened after where, you know, Don tries to get you as, as much as we said, we don't want to talk about Don anymore. He kind of finds his way into the conversation. Don tries to get you to join the Don Callis family and you have this iconic line of just telling him to kiss your ass. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because like microphone time on a wrestling show is so precious. Yeah. When did you find out that you were going to have to speak on a microphone? I'd say probably an hour before the match like actually it <laughs> sounds off. about right <laughs> they're, they're pretty good at telling me last minute like yeah just throw tom in is pretty good if you just throw him in last minute so i i do appreciate that because i don't like thinking too much so just put me on the spot i probably can do pretty good on the spot but yeah pretty quick beforehand i didn't even tell me what it was going to be either it was just like <laughs> yeah it's going to be on the microphone then we'll, we'll figure it all out later like that sort of thing uh, well, I want to talk a bit, a bit about um, how you guys were a part of the first ever Dungeon Wrestling show. Mm -hmm. And you guys, you wrestled a uh, time limit draw against the Bollywood Boys. So, again, you know, just kind of talking about uh, the, the entire experience with Dungeon Wrestling and how was that and how's that been? We, when we, me and Mark first came over in August of 2022, we was only intending to stay about two weeks to get just some shows done. As we're about to go on, like a few days before, and Brett's like, contacts us like, uh, so we've got this show coming at the end of October, so we have to stay for like a few extra months. 
uh, we said we'd, we'd really like you to do it. It's like, if you can't, I understand, but since you've already got your flight home and things like that, but we'd really like you because of the name, the legacy, and plus the, the venue, which is the Victoria Pavilion, which is obviously where Stampede Wrestling uh, every week in Canada. So I definitely was up for doing it. Mine was really homesick. We, we was like butting heads, like, we need to stay. And he's like, no, I'm not staying. And I was like, and we, we've had like a little back and forth for a week until I was like, right, I convinced him. So we, we had to stay for the extra like three, four months, whatever it was. We basically just got all these bookings everywhere else. But when Dungeon came around in October, I didn't know really what to expect because it was the first time Dungeon was going in such a big venue. It holds like 2,300 people or something. Damn! It's like, there's no, there's no way they're going to fill that, especially a brand new independent company like this. And then before you know it, Brett was there supporting. Even Brett was there to look over all the matches. He pretty much booked all the matches, got all the wrestlers in. So Brett and his son Dallas put all this production together, got proper cameras, got a pay-per-view going, got all these fantastic wrestlers and before you know, they've completely filled the venue, you know, 2,300 people in there. Just, they had to turn people away. It was unbelievable. Wow. That was another thing, like, Bollywood was such a great first tag team to show off our skills to. Because Bollywood's are there to, you know, prove a point too. And we wanted to make our names noticed. We just got to have such a, a great match, I believe. Unbelievable atmosphere. It just, it, it, honestly, it felt like going back in time. It felt like I was living in the 80s right, like, right then. And kids screaming everywhere and such a, a great family show. And ever since they've just been on fire, just, you know, every month or two, they'll run a, a show and do fantastic stuff. So I'm grateful to be part of it. That's awesome. I want to talk a little bit about your father, just because you would said that he, you know, bring, brings you your wrestling training the first time. And he mm-hmm. wasn't a wrestler himself, but was a great lover of professional wrestling and obviously a huge supporter of you. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, he passed away January of last year. What do you think he would say about your work so far in AEW? Uh, I know he'd actually be unbelievably proud because he was just that kind of guy. He's just, it was, un- no matter what show, if I was at a show with 20 people in there, he'd be just unbelievably proud. He just couldn't believe it. Like, he's just so happy for his sons, me and Mark, doing such a great job and just respecting professional wrestling and giving it everything we've got, you know, no matter what. Like, no days off. Yeah, I just know right now he'd be so proud and he, he'd probably have a few tears in his eyes if, if I was a guessing man because he, he just, It'd be like finally, like the, the time has come, mm. you know. Well, he's been fighting along with us so long because he supported us through it all too. When we first started, there was we didn't obviously indie shows. We don't have cameras and stuff like that. We get privileged so much with AEW. He'd literally drive with us in the car to the venue, and he'd, he'd literally pull his phone up like that and record it. And we made our own YouTube channel and started posting every single match we ever done on there. Ooh. So he's pretty good, and he was pretty good at making graphics too. So he, he'd do things like that for us, and he, he made sure we was on the right path. I think uh, if he was here now and could see that it's all paid off, he wouldn't believe it. He'd be so over the moon. Yeah, I, I feel like he, I mean, just watching you now, I think he'd be incredibly proud um, mm-hmm. because we're all incredibly proud of you. Yes. And the thing is, Thank you. we're still in the beginning stages. There's still so much more to come for Tommy Billington. Absolutely. And this story still has a lot more to go Mm -hmm. we hope to catch up with you when that time comes but tommy thanks for being here on aew unrestricted you all can catch new episodes of aew unrestricted every thursday on your favorite podcast platforms we've got audio episodes available thursdays we've got video episodes available on our youtube channel every monday aew dynamite airs Every Wednesday on TBS, we've got AEW Rampage every Friday on TNT, AEW Collision every Saturday on TNT, and of course, Ring of Honor available on Honor Club. Watch ROH.com every Thursday. Tommy, thanks for being here on AEW Unrestricted. I'm Will Washington. She's Aubrey Edwards. See you next time. Peace. Bye, everybody. Come on, throw your hands up. Let me see you. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it.